Hi, I'm WTOP film critic Jason Fraley, and all month long we're breaking down the best movies in every single genre. 30 genres over 30 days, and today we're breaking down, get ready to smile, the best romantic comedies of all time. Now, no romantic comedy list would be complete without the originators, the classic romantic comedies, including some screwball comedies like Howard Hawks' Bringing Up Baby, 1938. No one got it when it came out. In fact, Katherine Hepburn was labeled box office poison. Um, but she and Cary Grant are so hilarious in this. Throughout the beginning, I'm crying when he's saying, I'll be with you in a minute, Mr. Peabody. Um, all the antics, and Katherine Hepburn actually sinks that putt on the golf course. That's actually her. She, what a badass. Um, but just all the stuff with the the uh, the, the dinosaur skeleton collapsing in the museum. Uh, look at all the phallic symbolism. They're trying to find his bone the whole movie. But just the leopard, too, uh, bringing up baby, the actual baby, and they're singing, I can give you anything to love, but love, baby. It's it's a classic. Um, you, in addition to Howard Hawks, we also get Preston Sturges. I mean, this guy, I call him the Gale Sayers of, of romantic comedy. Gale Sayers was a football player that like had five great years for the Bears and then got sidelined with the injury. But that's because Sturges didn't last long, but man, he routed off so many good movies. Um, the Palm Beach story, uh, which is one of the greatest with Joel McRae and Claudette Colbert. Uh, the Lady Eve with Henry Fonda and uh, Barbara Stanwyck, where Stanwyck's sort of playing two roles at once. It's so great. Um, you could have also thrown in um, uh, Sullivan's Travels, great romantic comedy, but I actually put that in Showbiz, which we'll get to uh, a week or so from now. Um, but of course, the ultimate of the classics, Ernst Lubitsch. Uh, everyone says, any romantic, great romantic comedy from here on out, they'll say, ah, it had the Lubitsch touch. Because Lubitsch had the touch. He basically invented this genre. So if you love romantic comedies, you're welcome. Go watch all of his movies. We get Trouble in Paradise, which was pre-censor uh, code, pre haze code. So they got away with a lot of cool stuff uh, sexually there with innuendo. Ninochka, Greta Garbo, you know, she had said, uh, I want to be alone in Grand Hotel. But this was the one where she actually laughs. We get, a, we get to see a lighter side. Uh, of course, the shop around the corner. Everyone's seen uh, You've Got Mail um, with Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, but this is the one that started it. Instead of emails, this is actually physical letters they deliver to each other um, in, in the little cubicles. Uh, they work together, hate each other, but they see these little secret love notes, uh, pen pals, if you will. I love The Shop Around the Corner. I had to put it in my top 10. And then, of course, Billy Wilder. No, no, no list would be complete without Some Like It Hot, uh, which I put in a romantic comedy. It could have easily been one of the top five comedies, straight comedies of all time, but I put it here. Um, I just, I thought it was, I thought it was so great. Um, you have Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon cross-dressing to escape some gangsters, but I put it in romance because there's all that great romancing with Marilyn Monroe in this. Um, and you know, she's singing, I want to be loved by you, boop, boop, be doo. And of course, the big final question, um, where <laughs> Jack Lemmon rips his hat off and says, ah, I'm a man. And the guy says, well, nobody's perfect. It's classic stuff. And of course, Wilder, The Apartment, another Jack Lemmon classic, uh, where Jack Lemmon is, this is Cameron Crowe's favorite movie of all time. Go back and look with all the stats and stuff. It sounds a lot like Jerry Maguire. Um, but uh, Wilder, you know, Lemmon is renting out his apartment in New York City to he's to, to his bosses, uh, they're they're bringing sort of like Mad Men style. They're cheating on their wives and need somewhere to go cheat on them. Um, so he rents out his apartment. What's he gonna do while they're busy? I don't know. He's, maybe he's gonna fall for Shirley MacLaine in the process. So he's climbing the corporate ladder, but falling for a very young Shirley MacLaine in the final final line of shut up and deal. It's so great. Check out the apartment. Now, while the classic romantic comedies had movies like Some Like It Hot, this one has movies like Tootsie, another cross-dressing movie. But Dustin Hoffman, now we're getting into a more modern era. We're getting into the 80s. Definitely influenced uh, Mrs. Doubtfire, which we had in our family comedies. Um, but Tootsie's so good. Dustin Hoffman once said, you know, of course, all right, he's, he's a, let's back up. He's a starving artist in New York. He can't get roles on Broadway because um, he's just notoriously hard to work with. So what's he going to do? He's going to dress up as a woman um, and audition for a soap opera. And he gets the part. And there's these great, great lines in the script, too, where um, the, the, the cameraman is, is in on Dustin Hoffman, and, and they're like, whoa, whoa. Um because they can kind of tell something's off with them. Like, whoa, how far back can we, can we pull back on the shot a little bit? How far can we pull back? And the guy in the control room says, how about Cleveland? <laughs> it's just great lines. Or even Bill Murray is his roommate. Dustin Hoffman comes home and he's like, does this make me, does this make me look hippie? Does, you know, and he's dressing and Bill Murray goes, I think we're getting into a weird area here. It's just, it's just great. It's great stuff. Um, one of the greatest romantic comedies of all time. And Dustin Hoffman said, I never viewed it as a comedy. 
he said, I realize, and he tears up on the AFI countdown talking about this. He says, I never viewed it as a comedy, which it is. It's a romantic comedy. But he says, I, playing the part, I didn't view it. He was method acting it. And he said, I viewed it as a serious where it was the first time. And he starts tearing up. He says, I realized there were so many women that I deemed unworthy of going on a date on and with and just on their physical appearance. And based on doing this movie, he had a whole new respect. And there's that great line where he tells off. In the Me Too era, watch it, it holds up so better. He says, I'm not Tootsie or Doll or, or Dame or Babe. I'm uh, whatever his name is. <laughs> Dorothy. I'm Dorothy. Um, it is, yeah. Go back and look at it. Um, also, we get Say Anything. Come on, John Cusack holding the boombox, playing Peter Gabriel's In Your Eyes. Cameron Crowe's great. Another Cameron Crowe. Jerry Maguire. Yeah, it's a sports movie, but I think it's more of a romantic comedy. To me, it's the ultimate date movie. You get the romance and the comedy, romantic comedy. You get the comedy of, you know, um, show me the money and all that. Help me help you, Rod. Tom Cruise is just great. But... The romantic, I think what veers it into romantic comedy is the great, he comes in and he says, you know, she has her, Renee Zellweger's having her book club meeting and he's like, well, if this is where it has to happen, it has to happen. You complete me. I, shut up. Just shut up. You had me at hello. You had me at hello. Two great romantic comedy lines back to back in one scene. Come on. That's got to go on. I don't care if you think it's cheesy. I eat that up. It's, it has to be done just right. Cameron Crowe does it just right for me. Um, even newer ones like As Good As It Gets, where Nicholson tells Helen Hunt, you make me want to be a better man. Um, Love Actually, Mike McMurdy's favorite, a mosaic of our boss, uh, a mosaic of all these great romances around Christmas. Totally romantic comedy. And then The Big Sick I threw in there on the bottom slot. I wanted a uh, interracial romance here, and it's I thought it was hilarious. I thought Kamel Nanjiani, based on his own true story of falling for his, his girlfriend while she's in a coma, come on, we had to get some newer ones in here. Um, Holly Hunter, Ray Romano, two Bollywood actors as, as the other parents. I thought it was great. Snuck it in here in the modern rom-coms. Now, figuring out a top three was so tricky. Some Like It Hot was knocking on the doorstep in the top five. Philadelphia Story was knocking on the doorstep. I mean, think about it. Can you have a top three billing of actors in a movie bigger than Katherine Hepburn, Jimmy Stewart, and Cary Grant? No. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's just so great. Remade as High Society as a musical. But Philadelphia Story is so great. I wanted to put it in my top three. Ultimately, it got nudged out. But I know one of my favorite scenes ever is a drunken Jimmy Stewart showing up <laughs> at Cary Grant's house in the middle of the night saying, Oh, C.K. Dexter Haven! That whole conversation. How about another drink? He's, he's great. But ultimately... It's number four. The top three is number three, Frank, Frank Capra's It Happened One Night. If you don't have it in your top three, I think you're a little dishonest with film history because this was 1934, swept the Oscars, one of only three to win the top five of best picture, director, screenplay, actor, actress. Um, but the reason I think it's historically dishonest if you don't have it is this invented the romantic comedy. I mean, 1934, all those things of, you know, sort of the runaway bride at the end of the wedding. And we've seen that so many times in like Julia Roberts movies, all that kind of newer ones. But, um, you know, we have Pretty Woman on the list here. Um, but man, I mean, this invented it. And not only is it historically groundbreaking, it's just hilarious. It totally holds up. You got that Frank Capra magic, um, but you get Clark Gable, um, going on the run with Claudette Colbert. Um, she's te it's kind of a Seinfeldian humor if you go back and look at it like decades before. They're, he's talking the proper piggybacking techniques and oh, how what's the donut? Oh, you're a dunker in your coffee. Are you a donut dunker? It's so Seinfeldian. Um, but uh, when they when they have the walls of Jericho, which they call the the clothesline in the middle of their cabin um, because they're trying to separate each other. You know, they're not actually um, having a romance. He's just returning her for his job to 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 try to get him back to the wedding because she's a runaway bride um, but slowly they fall for each other and the walls of Jericho <laughs> come tumbling down um, when the people come in the cabin and he's like quit bawling quit ball it's just some of the greatest stuff ever and of course the most iconic scene the proper uh, hitchhiking technique there he's trying to do it with the thumb he's like watch some this will work the car drives by he's like oh maybe it's this the car drives by and she hops off the fence post and says sit down man I got it she lifts up her skirt and all of a sudden he slams on the brake and they get the it's just one of the great has to be in the top three it happened one night number two um, a movie that maybe a few years ago I might have put number one but because of allegations lately uh woody allen's annie hall i dropped it to number two because of that stuff um man you could put it number one it is w probably the most influential of all romantic comedies 
put really put other than the Godfather, really put Diane Keaton on the map, and of course Woody's on screen. At, they're the, they're the lovers here. It's referenced in so many other movies, but man, Woody does so much in this as a as a groundbreaking director and screenwriter. Um, they do every. There's an animated sequence. There's a sequence where they're talking to each other on you know on a patio like a first like any first date you've been on. But we see the subtitles of what they're actually thinking while they're saying it. Um, there's a scene where they're having they're standing in line at the movies waiting to go in the movies. Um, total rom com stuff. But they hear this pretentious guy in front of them talking about. Uh, what some artist thought, I think it was a filmmaker or, or an author, I can't remember, but he's pining, you know, he's pining uh, all intellectually, and Woody Allen's like, looks to the camera, can you believe this, this guy? And and then he actually leaves the screen and pulls the actual artist on screen that the guy's talking about, um, and he's like, no, actually that is not what I was thinking. There's so much where it breaks ground cinematically, and it's also just one of those great bittersweet romantic comedies in the end. He's like, there's that analogy where he's like, yeah, we all break our hearts, but in the end, we just need the eggs. Um, there's those split screens where they're at the, the therapist, and they, they at, it's Diane Keaton and Woody Allen at the therapist, and they ask Diane Keaton, you know, how many times do you have sex? And she's like, hardly ever, three times a week. And they say, how many times do you? He says, all the time, three times, or three times a week. I think I flipped it. Yeah, because the woman's saying, all the time, and he's saying, oh, no, never. Um, but it's just groundbreaking stuff. But again, had to drop it. You know, the Woody Allen allegations, and, and fair, full disclosure, I didn't include any of the newer movies, even though as, as much as I love Midnight in Paris, and uh, Match Point, and Bullets Over Broadway, and Deconstructing Harry, I mean, he, cr the most, arguably the most prolific filmmaker of all time in terms of writing his own scripts and directing them every year. But I didn't want to include anything post-allegation. I kept it to, uh, you know, 70s and 80s uh, gems. Uh, Annie Hall, number two, could be one. Instead, for those reasons, I leapfrogged it with my personal favorite romantic comedy in the number one slot, When Harry Met Sally. Um, it felt right that if we're going to drop Woody to two... I'm going to give a female screenwriter, Nora Ephron, number one slot, directed by Rob Reiner, but together the two of them, it is not just romantic comedy, it's one of my favorite movies, period, of all time. Billy Crystal was never better as Harry, and Meg Ryan was never be better as Sally, and we sort of chart um, decades of what began as a chance meeting, you know, friends of friends driving across country after college. They hate each other. They're like, yeah, men and women can never be friends because one's just trying to, you know, have sex with the other one. And she's like, no way. And he's like, watch. Um, so they start arguing, just duking it out. Over time, they become friends and are giving each other relationship advice in Manhattan, you know, with the leaves falling, never better, with Harry Connick Jr.'s remake of the Sinatra, you know, it had to be you. It's great. Rob Reiner intercuts it with interviews with, it looks like real couples, I have a feeling it's probably scripted. We should go check. It might be real. We should go check. Um, but it's real couples talking about how they met, interspersed with the tale of Harry and Sally. It's so great. And after a while, after all these years later, you know, we see them actually fall in love with the great, um, you know, New Year's Eve finale. And, um, you know, it's, you know, um, he runs towards her in the end and professes his love. And, you know, and it's, I love how, you know, you order your food on the side. I love how your nose gets cold. I mean, you know, and it's just, it's so great. And they take him back. And instead of, I love you, Harry, it's like, you know, I hate you. I hate you. And they embrace because they know they really do love each other. But, of course, the best scene of all time, the orgasm scene, before Seinfeld talked about it and all these others, it's, <laughs> they're sitting um, at the, the deli in New York, and of course, all of a sudden, Billy Crystal's like, oh, no way. I, I guarantee they're all having sex. I, I guarantee they're all actually having orgasms. And he does this weird pump with his fist that gets me every time. But she's like, oh, are you sure? And she sits down and proceeds to show how a woman can fake an orgasm. And he's, she's going, ooh, oh, yeah. And he goes, are you okay? <laughs> it's just so good. And of course, it builds and builds, and he realizes crap, yeah, I bet a lot have been faking it. And she, she goes through it and then just smiles and eats her pie. And then, of course, the great button on the end, Rob Reiner's mom actually in a cameo role. We cut to her and she says, I'll have what she's having. Come on, no moment is better in any romantic comedy, and it is the best romantic comedy of all time. They talk about Casablanca all the time in the movie, which is my favorite romance. But in terms of romantic comedy, when Harry met Sally, number one, and I'm never budging off it. Make whatever rom-com you want. When Harry met Sally is the tops to me. Best ever. See my full top 25 romantic comedies on WTOP.com's entertainment page. Join the blog, let us know what you think, and tune in tomorrow as we break down my favorite science fiction movies.